there, Storm fans. Bryant Cook, and tonight we are playing a deck from Evan Graveno. Evan is a member of our Combo Cabal tier, and that means that every single month, Evan gets to select a deck for their free donation deck. Evan has selected Enchantment Storm, and that's what we will be playing. Why is it called Enchantment Storm? Well, it is a Pyromancer Ascension and Aria Flame combo deck. That's pretty sweet. I've played Pyromancer Ascension since you could play it with Cataxian Probe and Modern six plus years ago. And during that entire duration, I wished that there was another enchantment that I could play. So that way I didn't have to play Goblin Electromancer. Well, that finally exists in Aria Flame. The downside of that is that while well, in the year 2022, Force of Vigor also exists. And if you play combo decks in Modern nowadays, you have to pick something to lose to. For example, Gift Storm loses to Creature Removal plus Graveyard Hate. Lotus Breach loses to Graveyard Hate and Force of Vigor. This deck just loses to Force of Vigor. Uh, it doesn't play a single card like Endurance or whatever. I guess technically you could beat this deck with Graveyard Hate if it's like a Leyline of the Void or a Rest in Peace, but Endurance, Spellbomb, Surgicals, none of that stuff really is that good against Pyromancer Ascension. So here it's mostly just the Force of Vigor that beats this deck, which makes it pretty interesting. I do think that this deck probably wants a single Past in Flames in the sideboard, just so that way if your opponent does have Force of Vigor, you're not relying on these two enchantments to win the game. That said, not my deck list. This is Evan's deck list. We're going to run it as is tonight and just crush. So uh, there are two pretty new cards in here that I think are major upgrades to the Pyromancer Ascension Shell. Consider a better opt because it puts dark cards to your graveyard to fuel the pyromancer ascension which is really sweet other really gaze which is obviously really good in your pyromancer deck just you know putting so much fuel in there to add your counters it's going to be awesome uh, and then we have two brand new cards discover the impossible and invoke calamity uh, these are both fairly expensive spells which concerns me a little bit because in your pyromancer ascension shell and aria flame deck you want a bunch of cards that cost low mana so that way you can cast multiple spells get your advantage deal more damage etc well both of these cards invoke calamity and discover the impossible are essentially double spells because you get two off of them uh, I, I do think that their mana cost might be a little bit restrictive. Maybe I'm wrong. We'll find out tonight in the video, but I'm excited to play this deck list regardless. This deck is really sweet. I think it's awesome. I'd like to thank Evan for submitting it and, you know, supporting this channel. That's all I've got. I'll see you in match number one. Don't go anywhere. It's going to be sweet. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. That said, there's no better way of showing your support than becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks, and we get to keep making combo content. The perks get better and better each level you go up. They also stack. To start off, with our Storm Fan tier, you unlock our private member section of our Discord, which comes with a highlighted user profile, and then some awesome badges and emotes for YouTube. Looking for a Cyborg help? Become a Stormtrooper, our middle tier, for two Cyborg guides of your deck choice every single month, on top of 50% off donation decks. Did we mention you also get 10% off merchandise from our shop? With our top tier, the Combo Cabal, you get a free donation deck every single month, 15% off merchandise from our shop, early access to private deck lists, and the most valuable perk in my opinion, videos early. That's right, you heard it, early access to all videos. Videos. But maybe Sweet Perk Secret Deck List Early Access to Videos isn't for you, but you'd still like to show your appreciation. Make sure to check out theepicstorm.com slash shop for card singles and storm swag. Please don't forget to use your membership discounts. Finally, if you want to see your combo deck here on this very YouTube channel, make sure to visit theepicstorm.com slash donation decks, where all you have to do is attach your TXT file and pick a donation tier. With our epic tier, you can even join me in a video to showcase your bold brew in person and explain the ins and outs of your strategy. Card availability won't be an issue due to our new sponsor, Card Hoarder. With Card Hoarder, renting is super easy. If you're looking to get into Magic Online, Online, there isn't a better, more affordable solution than Card Hoarder. Fun fact, you can rent the Epic Storm for seven tickets a week, which is just a great deal. There are many ways you can support us. Just pick whatever is best for you. In the meantime, let's play some Magic.
Okay, time for match number one. We're on the draw. And we have a five lander. Are you supposed to keep this? I'm afraid. Uh, I think you're supposed to mulligan. I'm just afraid to get a no lander. And this hand seems pretty reasonable. We'll keep this and put the discover on the bottom. All right, let's see how this goes. Blood Crypt. Okay, draw. I will shock here. Drawing the Ritual wasn't the worst because it means that we can accelerate into Aria next turn. Shizo. And Kroxa. Okay, so... The question is, what do you discard here? And I think for me, the answer is Bolt. I want the Discover to double spell for Aria. And I'm going to hold the Thought Scour, I think, just for that extra spell for Aria Flame. All right, draw. Wish. Another three is actually kind of bad. All right, so we need to tap this for red mana. We'll cast Desperate Ritual. And then Aria Flame. I uh, trigger opponent gains 10, they're up to 30, and we will pass the turn. So the concern here is our opponent plays a discard spell, and then our hand is nothing. This is why running a bunch of threes in your deck is really awkward right here. Land number three from the opponent. Ooh, it looks like they might be passing, and they are. Draw. Okay, we got lucky and hit land three. I'm just going to pass her now, and then I can discover on their end step. They hit land four. Four mana. Torok. That's kind of annoying. Um, let's cast this discover, get our trigger. So we're going to discard two cards at random here, which is unfortunate. Okay, we will look at the cards. I will take a Thought Scour and then cast that. Um, Target me, I guess. Gets another Trigger. We drew another Discover. Okay. I guess keeping Discover was fine here. I mean, when you have Discover in Aria like this, it's nice. We're so far away from Invoke. I'm just going to main phase this, because if we hit Mana Morphos, I might be able to, like, double, triple spell this turn, I mean. Uh, so Lightning Bolt. I could kill the Torok, or I could bolt them. I could also just take Thought Scour. Uh, I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. I think maybe it's Thought Scour. And then we'll target us. That triggers, they take four. Now we draw. If it's a land, we need to play the land, because if we draw one more land, we can cast this Invoke. It's worth noting, we... Well, Inquisition isn't at that. Uh, we did have turn two Aria in its best matchup. I know Aria is looking really good right here, but the black-red deck can't actually beat an Aria. So it obviously looks a little bit better than it normally would, I guess, is the point that I'm trying to make here. Draw... That was not a mana for uh, Invoke Calamity. I think I'm just going to pass. So this otherworldly gaze represents 11 damage. Okay, we are now in our opponent's upkeep. They were thinking for a little while on my turn and then ultimately decided not to do anything. And they hit a second red source. What does that mean? Am I dead? Uh... Attack Bolt Bolt would put me to one. So they'd have to have something better than that. All right, so Torok will do, deal me four, and I'm at seven. Three cards left in the opponent's hand. That's one Bolt. I'm at four. And they're going to pass. All right, let's cast this other Whirly Gaze. Like I mentioned, this represents 11 damage. We're going to keep a Ritual on top because Ritual wins this game. And then flashback Otherworldly Gaze, and now they take 6. 
Okay, and then we put the ritual out back on top. And we don't even need this Invoke Calamity, although we could use it to deal like an extra like 30 this turn. And that'll do. So that is game number one over Rakdos midrange. Pretty sweet. I think I'm just gonna submit. I don't think we really want anything else here. You could board in these extra enchantments to increase your density. So that way their discard spells matter less, which is a pretty interesting thought. Um, but I don't know if that's quite necessary, I guess. I'm just gonna resubmit and hope for the best. Okay, so this seems like a reasonable hand. You might think like, Bryant, why don't you mulligan to an enchantment? It's a pretty fair question. And I think the reason why is our opponent's playing a discard deck. So if you mulligan all the way down to these powerful enchantments, you're likely to get punished. Where in our opening hand here, I have an otherworldly gaze, which means that our opponent can play this Inquisition of Kozilak. And later on, I can chuck an enchantment on top of my deck until I'm ready to cast it. So that's actually just a little bit better than mulliganing aggressively. And it's interesting that they took Lightning Bolt, because that means that there could be something like a Ragavan in our future. Okay, Den of the Bugbear. And here it is, the old rags. Didn't see that coming. Um, I think we're going to otherworldly gaze now to give them a card we don't care about. Okay. And then we'll leave the Tarn on top. So they're going to exile Tarn. And then it's likely going to be our turn unless they have another discard spell here. Nope. Okay. Can we get lucky and draw Pyromancer Ascension? Nope. All right. I'm just going to pass here. Grave Cairns. Uh oh. I think we're getting Torocked. Here it comes. There it is, Torok, turn three. Uh, I'm gonna let that go and just hope that they hit lands. E. All right, so we're gonna cast other really gaze here and let's see if we can find an enchantment. We do need one of those pesky enchantment cards. Cast other really gaze. Speaking of pesky enchantments, all right, so when we mill this pirate, uh, this desperate ritual, that means that this desperate ritual will add a counter, which is really nice. All right, pass the turn. We do have uh, one steam vents left, but also another island. Thought sees. All right, I'm gonna have to cast this. Consider it's sort of a bummer when if they take the desperate ritual, it's we don't we won't get the counter on the ascension so that's unfortunate i will keep that though yeah i mean the aria is also really good so if they take the aria that's fine because i get to keep the card that adds a counter to ascension it's a win-win i guess the downside would be if they think that they can kill us faster than we can win with aria all right and they took the aria but now the Torok has five power, and they have a dash drag event here, so I'd be taking seven. So I think what we want to draw on our turn is like another consider, because I could play Desperate Ritual into Consider, and the Ascension would have two counters on it. Pyretic Ritual. And they decide not to cast it. Draw. Ding. All right, let's cast the Ritual here. Add a counter. Yes. And now we want to draw like Mana Morphos off this Consider. Yes. All right, so from now on, our Instant and Sorceries will copy. Uh, we have to mill this. I can't cast that. So we'll put Invoke into the Graveyard. Do I even want the... I guess... I can play the Aria. It's a way to win the game. Um, pretty close to death. Actually, am I dead on board? I am dead on board to the Den of the Bugbear. That's unfortunate. I had to like find Lightning Bolt or something there to stay alive. 
All right, so they can bugbear me and it will be lethal. Did they see it? Yep, they saw it. Okay. So we are going to take this is eight, and then down in the bugbear makes a one one, and that will be lethal. So that is nine. Womp womp. Okay. Game three. We're just going to hit Smith again. I mean, that was a really good start for them. They had turn one discard spell into Ragavan, into Torok, into more disruption. Like, that was a very good draw, and we were still in it. All right, game three of match one. Yeah, I'm going to keep this. I'm going to have to hope they don't have turn one discard spell, and we find a red source for this turn two ascension. Okay. Island and pass the turn. Blood Crypt. They're paying the two. And it looks like a discard spell to me. Alright, I'm gonna scour. We found another wish. So I have to imagine that they take the ascension here. And there it goes. Okay. This hand is now looking very awkward. Draw. All right, pass the turn. Den of the bugbear. Rocks. Uh, we're just gonna discard a wish here. We don't need that many wishes. And they're passing. So let's cast other worldly gaze. Let's see if we can find a red source. No, that's the answer. <laughs> okay. Um. So we're actually going to upkeep the other Whirly Gaze here. Uh, do I want to keep that Aria? I think the answer might be yes. All right, pass the turn. Land number three. Thought sees. Wish down. I think Wish was actually the worst card in my hand. I'm not even joking. And another Croxa. So we're going to keep Discover the Impossible. When has two cards left in hand. Draw. And let's play the Yaria. They'll go up to 26 life. And we uh, don't have a lot of fuel for, the, for this Aria, but they don't have a clock yet. So I guess that's the silver lining here. Den of the Bugbear. Draw. I think I'm just going to cast this Discover. Save targets. And let's auto yield. And might as well cast it. Pass the turn. A lot of spells away. Three cards in hand. All the Kamadawa legendary lands in this deck. All right, so they're attacking with Den of the Bugbear here. So we're going to take four, and uh, they want to race. That's a good one. Let's start on Consider, though. Okay, and then Manamorphose. I'm going to add Blue Blue here. Consider, that was a good one. All the damage. We'll keep that. Scour ourselves. So now they take six. And then no matter what happens, this other worldly gaze represents lethal next turn. So they have to deal me 16 damage this turn or somehow stop me from winning. Okay, another Den of the Bugbear activation. So we'll take five here going to 11, but then we have this wrapped up. All right, upkeep other worldly gaze. And that's lethal. That's match number one. I hope you enjoyed it. Four more wonderful rounds of killing people with enchantments to come. I know you're going to enjoy it. Stick around. I'll see you in match number two. If you haven't joined them already, I would recommend opening up our description down below and joining our seven social media networks. They're each great in their own way, but I would strongly suggest joining our Discord server. In there, you will find others just like you looking to improve their Storm game and grow as a combo community. 
If you're a member of our YouTube channel, you should sync your account to Discord to unlock our private member section that has the latest and greatest deck lists, concepts, and much, much more. Let's get back to comboing out. Match number two, we're on the play. All right, turn to Ascension or Aria, but we only have one land. I'm going to roll the dice here. We're going to keep this. I mean, odds I hit land number two, at least 100%. I mean, I'm, I'm going to hit it. It's going to happen. When it takes a mulligan here. Steam vents and pass the turn. Okay, so the point has Scalding Tarn. It's really important that we hit our land here to get this Ascension down before Counterspell. Alright, Thought Scour. Alright, so we milled two non-lands, but we also didn't draw a land. And... Oh, that's brutal. Okay. We have to pass the turn here. Yikes. Big yikes. Stomping Ground, what are you playing? Misty Rainforest. Alright, so not a blue deck. Renin 6, sure. Alright, I would really like to draw a land. Draw. Okay, we hit one. So my math wasn't entirely accurate, but I did hit one. Right? Like, it wasn't 100%. It was just, like, 99.9, .9 and we were the point one, right? That's how math works. Um, dry sense of humor. Forgive me. But, hey, we have an Ascension in play. Let's see if we can capitalize. So they are playing blue. Utopia Sprawl. Okay. They chose red for Sprawl. Return to land with Ren. So they're not shardless because they have Utopia Sprawl in their deck and run. Magus of the Moon, that's fine. Don't care about that. Draw. Wish. Hmm. Doesn't really do us any favors at the moment. I could accelerate into Aria, I guess, but I don't even know if that's good. Could also just cast the gaze here, which might be our best choice. Okay. Put the land on top and pass. So we know that they have a wooded foothills in hand and then five unknown cards. Or I'm sorry, it was a scalding turn, not a wooded foothills. My bad. And now they have Misty in hand. All right, Magus and the Moon getting in there. What are you casting? This thing? Whenever a land goes to the graveyard from anywhere, it gets a 1-1 one -one counter. Return it to its hand. All right. So we're going to play Tarn and cast this Discover the Impossible, which will trigger the Pyromancer Ascension. Yes. So if we hit... A mana morphos off this that would probably be the nuts uh, i'd also take another scour but morphos would really allow our hand to go off here um i think we just take the bolt because that means this bolt next turn allows us to do a bunch of fun stuff and we'll kill the creature okay pass the turn Opponent still has five in hand, one of which is a Misty. Running six up to seven. And another over slime. We're going to take two from the Magus here and go to 14. Ouch. Draw. And another turn. Okay, so we're going to bull. Whoa, no, no, don't cast that. Okay, good. Uh, let's bolt the opponent. This is going to get the second counter on this. So now all of our instants and sorceries copy. Let's play Ascension, or I'm sorry, uh, the Pyromancer Ascension, Ritual, whatever. Words, things, it's fine. So we're going to get a bunch of stuff here. 
And I'm going to play Aria of Flame, which will bring our opponent up to 24, but I'm not overly worried about that. All right, Desperate Ritual. So now we go up to seven red. Yes. And then I'm going to save targets and then auto yield. So seven red coming up and then we're going to cast a wish. So wish will copy. And our opponent decided they're done. Okay, so that was game number one. Uh, this is a green deck, so Force of Vigor is an option. I think we probably want Hermit here. I'm going to get rid of these invokes against the uh, possible Endurance deck. And I think we could probably shave a Lightning Bolt. Like, I'm not actually convinced that Bolt is super good in this matchup, so... Let's try this out. Game number two, we're on the draw. I think this hand's probably reasonable enough. We'll try this. We have the Hermit. I love that card. Turn one, Scalding Tarn, draw. Wish is not really what we needed. Uh, it's sort of unfortunate we opened up on both of our islands because they're the only cards in our deck that don't make red. But we have this other really gaze that should help us out. Triome. Wooded Foothills. So one thing that's not so great about Hermit here is that if this is a run in six, our Hermit's just going to get shot down very quickly, and it is. Okay. But uh, a nice little bit of synergy is if we mill another Hermit, we can just put it straight into play off the other Whirly Gaze. Well, I mean, we can pay three mana and put it in play, but I mean, you don't have to cast the front half. All right, play the Gaze. I think we keep all of um. I don't know. All right, I think I want all of them. Let's try this out. Okay, our turn, we're gonna take a draw here. There was a long pause that made me think that like maybe they had sided in surgical, which is pretty uncommon, but I don't know. You may be wondering why I'm playing the Hermit here into the Ren in six, because Ren can just ping down the Hermit. Why not? Am I just not gonna cast this spell the rest of the game? Like this is my opportunity to cast the Hermit. I should just do it. You could also like cycle Manamorphose Desperate Ritual into Aria, but I feel like that's just a waste of resources and not really what we want to be doing. All right, so what are you doing? So they did decide to ping the Hermit. What's the game plan? Are you going to moon me when I don't even have a mountain? They're not basic. They're passing. Okay. I wonder if I'm supposed to play the Hermit from the graveyard here just to make sure that this Aria lives. Benevolent Geist. Playing the long game. Ah, yeah. Hear me roar, my flying spirit. Ah, uh, they bolted it. That was not very nice. You left a lightning bolt against me? I guess they don't know any better. They might think I'm just on a weird build of Gift Storm. And there's the over slime. So much slime. Okay, and they return Foothills. Still five cards in hand. Now they're at 16, so Arya's going to put them up to 26. We're drawing a land here. Grab the mountain. And let's just play Aria Flame. Alright, so they're at 26. I'm a little bit worried about Force of Vigor. Um, because they don't even have to cast it now. They could wait until Aria actually becomes lethal and then do it so that way we burn resources. Or Besage you would also be really bad for us here. But Hills to Hand. And they played the Misty Rainforest, so we know that they have a land in hand now. Attacking for four. And they're going to fetch, so they're at 25 now. Steam Vents tapped. Not taking the two. 
Okay. Consider's a good one. Let's try a Desperate Ritual. Save targets at them. Okay, Manamorphose. You have to have something, right? I'm not going to play that. Manamorphose. Red, red. Canal is not very good here. Uh, let's cast Consider. Don't want that. Otherworldly Gaze. So I could play Wish here. Um, but I guess I could get Lightning Bolt. That would be the play. They're at 10. Bolt would put them to 1. All right, so I'm going to go to 12. Yeah, this puts them to 1, unfortunately. All right, pass the turn. We're in a weird spot because next turn, let's say they blow up the Aria Flame. We could play Aria, put the life gain trigger on the stack, and cast Otherworldly Gaze, and that could actually do it. What are you doing? Endurance. Okay. So that's actually pretty scary because right now that's 8 damage and I'm at 12. So a fetch land can't do it because they're at 1. But a, the Ren would put me to 11. They attack for 8 and that means I'm dead to bolt. Did that do it? 6. That's lethal with the Ren. Oh, uh, they just have it. Oh, uh, we came so close. If uh, that wasn't a tap land, we actually would have had that one. Looks like we're going to game number three. I wonder if maybe I don't want the Hermits. It didn't look like they're a deck that actually has counter magic in it. So let's bring the Bolt back. I still don't think I want the Invoke Calamity, but maybe... I don't know. Uh, let's try just boarding those in. Game number three. Keep. All right. Scalding turn and pass the turn. Would love to find Pyromancer Ascension off this consider. Mountain and Aragavan. So I have a decision to make because we know that their deck that has moon effects in it. Uh, do I get the stomping, or I'm sorry, the steam vents, so that way I can cast multiple things, so I get the island? I think that there's a chance they boarded out the moon effects, so um, I'm going to undo that. Whoops. Play consider. I'm going to keep you. All right, draw. And I'm going to pass. I can bolt in their pre-combat. So that way they can't dash another into play. All right. And another additional bonus is they can't uh, force of negation my bolt. Land number two. Is this a Ren? They're at 17. It is a Ren. So I think now I'm going to use that opportunity to get an island with this just in case they try to moon me. I don't think they would, but it's, it feels pretty free to play around, I guess, is the point that I'm trying to make here. Draw. All right, let's just play the Aria and pass the turn. Okay, and Aria resolves. They're at 27. In our upkeep, we can cast out the Whirly Gaze and get a little bit of uh, Scry Equity. All right, so they've decided to activate their Misty Rainforest. What will the play be? Ah, uh, that's going to make life difficult. So they were sitting on the Besaju, and they were trying to figure out how they wanted to use it. Because for the rest of this game, this is like the Force of Vigor problem, where I can never get an enchantment online. They have me on lockdown. So I think now the winning line is actually like something like Wish for Empty, which feels a little lackluster in this deck, if I'm being honest. All right, we have to try to find Desperate Ritual, I think. Gaze, or, oh, yeah, Otherworldly Gaze. 
Uh, and I can't take this Pyromancer because they have Besaju Lock every single turn. I think I just mill these. And then still my upkeep, let's flash back. The wish doesn't help me here. Yeah, I just have to mill all of those. Draw. Morphos is a fine draw. But we're still looking to spike another Desperate Ritual. That would be our best find. Opponent has seven cards. So even if I draw a Desperate Ritual, I have seven mana, which is exactly enough to empty. I couldn't even bolt into empty. And they're just passing. Draw. Consider. Don't want that. I think I'm going to play the Ottawara. Like, I just need more mana. And then on their end step, I can flash back Otherworldly Gaze. And I can also cash in this Islet at some point. They fetched. What's the play? Nothing. Okay. I think they're just holding open Besaju. I'm not really sure. The Overslime. You got it. They're at 23. It's a lot of life, especially for goblin tokens. Uh, that's a pyretic ritual. I guess I keep that. So right now I have five, six, seven. I'm going to cash in the land. See if I can get lucky. Draw. That is not a lucky draw. So now I have six mana, which is not enough. Hmm. Maybe I just play the Ascension and make them blow it up so that way I can get the last land out. All right, so they played a forest and they're tapping a mountain here. Okay. And they're using Besaju. It's good for me. All right, so they're attacking for seven, which would put me to seven. Thing is, trample, which is kind of annoying. I'm not sure how else I would win this game, though, is the problem without making goblin tokens. So I'm taking eight here all the way down to six. All right, draw. Scour. I guess it's now or never, right? I'm just going to go for it. We have to cast as many spells as possible, so casting this is somewhat free. Um, can I mill the Manamorphos? Right now I have six mana. I think what I'm, tr what I'm supposed to try to do here is cast Otherworldly Gaze into the uh, Desperate Ritual so I can splice it. Uh, so if I keep this ritual and then cycle into it, that's four, five, six. That's still short. Um, four, five, six. Yeah, we have to burn it. All right, so we need a miracle cycle here. We have to cycle into Desperate Ritual to even stay alive. Draw. That is not going to do it. Um, you might be thinking I could like double bolt this. That's not going to work. One, they would just return it to their hand, but they also have Besage you, which would turn this into a 7-7. Seven, seven. So we have lost the first match. Kind of a bummer. We were really close in game two. But uh, I think we saw the weakness of what I talked about in the deck tech, where you have to win with these enchantments in a world with Force of Vigor and Wild Besaju. We didn't see Force of Vigor, but Besaju locked me out in game three. Uh, there's no Past in Flames. There's no Galvanic Relay in the board. And uh, I felt that pressure for sure. So we are zero and one. I'm sorry, one and one. My bad. That was match number two. It's been a long day. Please forgive me. Match number three is coming up.
Playing your favorite combo deck in paper just got so much easier with the Epic Storm Mini Token Pack. You can pick one up at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $13. It includes 64 double-sided mini tokens. That's 128 tokens total. And they include 10 black, 10 blue, 10 red, 5 green, 5 white, 3 colorless, 20 storm counters. That means that you can count your way all the way up to 20 for grape shot everyone's favorite stormwind condition a galvanic relay exile indicator four treasure tokens for strike it rich and then 10 monk tokens for our vintage friends it also has slime time live eighth progenitor ooze tokens with the power and toughness already built in to make playing in paper so much easier no fumbling around with dice we've got you covered make sure to go grab those if you're playing modern and then squirrels versus goblins chatterstorm versus empty the warrens the battle of the ages you definitely need 20 squirrel tokens and 20 goblin tokens you're gonna love this mini token pack i promise and once again you can grab that at the epicstorm.com slash shop match three let's get this one turn two pyromancer you know i'm going to keep this come on what were you thinking? You thought I was going to consider mulliganing two lands Pyromancer? Get out of here. If you thought that, you shouldn't be watching this video. Okay. Just going to pass the turn on their end step. We can cast this Consider. What is the person playing drag named Dragonstorm playing? Uh, I don't think Urza Saga is a Dragonstorm card. I feel a little bit lied to. Somewhat hurt. Uh, we can mill that. I'd much rather have a Manamorphose in hand. Consider that to be a win. Draw. Let's uh, thin this deck a little bit. Let's go get a Steam Vents. Play the Ascension. And pass. Saga up to two. It's worth noting we mill the Pyretic Ritual. This is a Desperate Ritual on our hand. All right, so they're just on hammer time. Ding. That was good. Morphos. Red, red. Morphos. All right, always yes. Auto yield. Okay. Red, red. Manamorphose again. This is going to add the second counter on to the Ascension. Red, red. Ritual. Always yes. Always whatever. You know what I mean. I don't want to be clicking on that stuff. All right. Desperate Rituals. Wish. So now we get two cards out of our board. I think I want to try to play March here. Let's exile the wish. All right, so this is going to copy. I go. So it's ritual. Picked up an Aria, but I'm not even sure if we want to play Aria here. This was a spot where, like, having past in flames in the sideboard, like I mentioned, would flat out win the game. Uh, so it's sort of a bummer not to have it here, because I think we're going to have to, like, empty and pass the turn versus, like, a possible uh, play that kills us. <laughs> um, I think we just have to empty here. Sort of a bummer, but I, I do think it's the right play. All right, 18 goblins, please don't kill me. And the opponent decided 18 was good enough. That's what you get for having a username of Dragonstorm and you're over there playing the aggro deck. You had it coming. Um, you probably want these. Let's get these invokes out and call it a day. Oh, I guess we probably want the... Uh, I'm also like not convinced that like engineered explosives is the right card in your pyromancer ascension uh aria flame deck that feels like it doesn't belong like they didn't know what should be there so they just put in explosives i would find something else for these slots i don't actually know why they're here like they seem fine against hammer time and perhaps i should have boarded them but i would rather have something else in my sideboard and this hand is fantastic 
Turn one coast, coast to coast. Draw. We're just going to play the canal and pass. If they play a creature, we can bolt it or whatever. Turn two pyromancer. Here's a saga. Memnite. Ornithopter. Damping sphere. That's no fun. Okay, we did cite in a few answers to that. You can also just beat that card with Aria for what it's worth. All right, let's play Ascension and pass the turn. Saga is up to two counters. Next turn it will summon likely a Colossus Hammer, but who knows? And another Urza Saga. Moon Snare Prototype. That's a spicy one. I like that. Okay, so we're going to take one here going to 18. Draw. Spire Bluff Canal. Um, I think we just pass here. Now they can tap the Ornithopter and make a Construct token. That's a big construct. The Damping Seer might get us here. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to beat that, even with the Lucky Top deck. All right, they got us. Let's just go to the next one. Womp womp. And uh, I'll board in these explosives. I do think that they should be something else, but uh, while we have them, they should just be in our deck. I wonder if like Wish is just too slow in this matchup, because like what we could do is board out the Wish and then board in Enchantment, Enchantment, wherever it is, and then board in the Grape Shot and there's board out the three Wishes. But I don't know if I actually like that or not. We do need two cards to come out right now, and I think that this is likely sort of a slow matchup for Discover, but Discover does dig really well for our answers. I think it just has to be... Uh, this cover's probably better than Wish. Let's try this, I guess. Alright, on the play. I don't think this hand is good enough, unfortunately. I think I'm pressured into keeping this hand, even though I don't want to. And I'm going to bottom the Wish. It's just too slow here. All right. Sculling turn and pass the turn. Seacrum Coast. We're going to respond to that with this Thought Scour. Scour. We milled an Ascension. Not good. Not good. And another Scour. I'm just going to be lazy and scar myself now. Wish. Yeah. Like, we're so far away from Wish being a relevant card. There's a Saga. Reality Chip. Okay, this is sort of uh, falling out of favor, but this opponent is running it. It's f a fine card, it's just like not very popular anymore. The lightning bolt. I think I'm going to pass here, and uh, if they try to attach it, I can bolt it. The yes, Esper Sentinel, that is. And there's Saga. No attack, okay. Let's bolt this Sentinel. So if they have Spell Pierce, they could pierce me here. And they let it go. Draw. I'm going to hang on to this, I think. I'm going to pass another end step I can cast to discover the impossible. I guess uh, I could also theoretically try to accelerate into Wish into Magus, but I'm pretty far away from that line. Okay, so now Saga goes up to three. And it looks like they're going to activate it. 
relic. Okay. So they can use the relic here. I don't think it really matters that much if I'm being honest. We're going to take a hit for four and we'll fall down to 13. All right, and then discover the impossible. So I think we're supposed to take the, I guess I could take the Aria, but then I'm like multiple turns away from the Aria being okay. Or I could take the Abrade and just blow up the Relic now. I think it's better to try to go around the Relic because they can just um, like get another piece of Graveyard Hate with this Saga. Draw. All right, let's just cast the Explosives. Pass the turn. All right, so let's blow this EE in case they decide to get uh, a Pithing Needle. I think actually what would have been better for them here is if they just allowed this ability to go on the stack because I'm pressured to sacrifice the explosives. And then if I do, they can make a uh, another construct after. Nettle cyst, okay. So that is a 4-4. Four, four. I mean, that's something. Okay. Draw. Another discover. We're just going to play Aria here. Such a good spell pierce target, unfortunately. And it resolves, wow. Okay. Um, a little surprised by that. What do you have? All right, they're just using the relic. So they actually made the nettles or made the nettles slash germ token a little bit smaller. So I'm honestly okay with that. I'm not planning on using my graveyard the rest of this game. Moon snare prototype back up to a four four. Thought cast. This is a pretty cool list. Um, I think the thought cast makes a lot of sense. If you're running the blue version. And that germ token's all the way up to a 5-5 five five now. Yikes. My clock is running out. Draw. They still have four cards in hand. Alright, so I could play this for one. And it would hit three things. They would get to draw a card. Um, but it also eats my entire turn. I guess the problem here is that the Nettle Cyst could then equip. If I do it for zero, the Nettle Cyst then just equips the Sentinel. Hmm. All right, I'm going to let them draw some cards here. All right, so they're going to draw one. And now they have the Spell Pierce. Rebuke. Okay. I might be dead. Um, because they have six on board already. So they equip the reality chip so they can play artifacts off the top. Uh, they now have seven power. Need They need one more. But honestly, it doesn't even matter because it's not like I can win on my turn. And damping sphere. Insult to injury. All right, so that's going to do it, and we will be one and two with two rounds left to go. Womp, womp. Hey, you're still watching. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe. If you're looking to make a purchase from Card Hoarder, TCG Player, or Amazon, and are looking to support us, you can open up our description down below, and in there you will find our affiliate links. Those same links are found on the homepage of the Epic Storm, but that's not all. We've included a card hoarder button on our website that will load the Epic Storm in your card hoarder cart to make life simple for you. Match number four. We are on the draw, but we've opened up both copies of Invoke Calamity. Are we allowed to keep this? Uh, we do have three lands already. I kind of want to just for the science. Like, is this card actually any good? I've been boarding it out a lot. 
Let's see if there's any real game to it. Our opponent has searched up a Steam Vents into Ragavan. So no, this card is not going to be good. We're just going to get pummeled by one of the better decks in the format. You got it. Need to draw Lightning Bolt here. Not Lightning Bolt. Okay. Ragavan going to get in now. We'll fall to 18 life. Fiery Islet. Land number two, and they're just passing. So now they have Archmage's Charm, Counterspell, and, I mean, various other cards up. It's going to be tough to kill this. Draw. Another Consider. I'm just going to play the Steam Vents and pass. All right, so Ragvan's going to get in. We'll follow the 16. Triggers. Wish. I don't know if they'd even cast Wish here. I'd be kind of surprised if they did. Mishra's Bobble. And they'll Bobble me. Bobble, Bobble. Land. Ooh, they're actually casting the Wish. I'm kind of surprised by that. What are you getting? Relic. Okay. My plan here is to windmill slam this aria and hope that it's good enough. All right, so they get to draw a card off Bobble. Thought Scour. Grab that island and play aria flame. Have to hope that aria is good enough to race. Aria is resolved. Okay. So this Aria Flame needs to beat uh, Ragavan, Dragon's Ridge Channeler, and Murktide Regent. So we're going to take two going to 13 life. Thought Scour. They can scour themselves here to make fuel for the Murktide Regent. Progressive Iteration. Channeler. Okay. They're at 24 now. There's a channeler. And they'll target me. They have counterspell mana up, which is kind of scary. And here comes the Murktide. So they have 8 damage in play. And then they can use this to pump the Murktide next turn. I could be dead. The question is, can we deal lethal? I, I doubt it, but we'll cast some spells here. All right, so we're going to save targets and auto yield. Okay, so let's cast Manamorphose. We'll make blue blue. All right, so I hit my land. That's good. So if we played Discover into like another Manamorphose, that could theoretically do it. I'm going to start off and consider here. Come on, Ritual? I can go to the graveyard. Hey, and I had a Ritual. Okay. So this will deal them four. So you're saying there's a chance. Ooh, um... I have five mana. I can cast Invoke. I think this might do it. Uh, because they tapped out, Invoke is actually going to win this. Wow, I can't believe we got there. <laughs> yeah, like, in my brain, I wasn't thinking about Invoke Calamity, because in my mind, I was already like, yeah, they have Relic, I can't do this anymore. Uh, so that was sweet. I guess we finally got to use Invoke Calamity. I don't think Invoke is actually good in this matchup. I'm going to take it out. So, I am interested in just Pyromancer. I think you want to slow them down. Well, not slow them, get underneath their counter magic, and that's really what Ascension does. And the Abraid slows them down. Uh, you could board in Explosives, but I'd feel so dumb if they hit it off Ragavan. Like, that's the problem with Acme Truth, in my opinion, is, like, if you side this in and it gets hit by Ragavan, it's game, it, it's lights out, you're done. So I feel like that's a little bit risky. Let's try this out, though. 
how are we feeling about this this good this a keep yeah no all right this seems pretty good to me we're definitely going to keep this and let's get rid of the steam vents i do love double gaze when we have pyromancer ascension it looks like they're playing the hard control deck here no turn one threat consider milling a bobble what you doing dashing a ragavan what's going on here and relic that's actually kind of a bummer uh when we have the ascendancy i think i'm gonna cast the gaze still and i'm gonna mill the abrade i so you could keep the abrade and blow up the relic i don't think that's actually like a winning line i think we just want to like plow through the relic with the ascendancy so you might be thinking like why don't i lightning bolt the ragavan there getting pyromancer ascension into play is more likely to win me the game than ending the ragavan right there they could have their own pyromancer ascension <laughs> now that's just good magic they're doing it yes i love it all right, we will remove this Scalding Tarn. Draw. Aria. All right, let's cast other Rally Gaze. Always yes. Trigger. Okay. Um, I think we leave a land on top. So on my turn, I can flashback this other worldly gaze and uh, trigger the ascension. So it sort of pressures them into using the relic. I think I'm going to bolt here. Luster storm. That's kind of surprising. Okay. I am getting ragged. Okay. Atawara, so they chose not to bounce my ascension. Merc tide. That's pretty scary. Yeah. Draw. Well, that's not going to do it. Um, let's cast this Manamorphos. Blue red. I think that Merc Tide is going to get me. They're swinging for eight. I mean, like, it's theoretically possible for me to draw, like, running Manamorphos or something. So I think I'm supposed to just, like, let them win the game or whatever. But I don't know. So now we take eight down to five. And now they get to play Discover, digging for Counterspell or whatever. Chose not to play Discover, which is kind of shocking. So this would create Double Wish. I mean, this still doesn't win the game. Let's see what answer they have, though, because, like, they definitely have something. Dark Mage's Charm? Sure. Okay, game three. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to resubmit. Game three on the play. Triple Aria Flame. As much as I'd love to, you gotta ship that back. All right, let's try this, I suppose. I don't love this hand. Scalding Tarn. We know that they have Fluster in their deck. Let's cast the Otherworldly Gaze looking for land two. Ah. Uh, I mean, am I supposed to mill the Ascension? I don't think so. I think I have to keep Ascension. Draw. Scour. Traded Rip Land number two. Are they going to counter my Thought Scour? They are. Okay. You have successfully kept me off land two. Draw. Ouch. 
consider all the counters pass. I mean, in hindsight, it looks bad because they kept the ascension, but like, I don't think you're allowed to mill it. Maybe I'm wrong. Expressive iteration. Relic of Progenitus. That is not a good sign for me. Draw. And they didn't play Relic. It's shocking. All right, well, I have to play the Ascension. If you have another spell, Pierce, you got me. And they do. That's a bummer. It's a lot of one man interaction out of this deck, actually. Don't think we're going to be uh, winning this third game. You had to assume that our opponent had something if they weren't willing to play the Relic. Okay, still three cards in hand. And then they draw off the bobble going up to four. Consider. Have to mill that. Pass the churn. Dash Ragavan. Yep. And now we go to nine. Otherworldly Gaze. I love this card. It's so good. Merc Tide. There it is. And I have zero chance of winning. Actual zero. All right. So we are now one in three. If you're looking for more great Magic the Gathering content, definitely check out the Eternal Glory podcast. It is myself, Brian Cook, alongside Brian Koval and Phil Gallagher. We primarily discuss Legacy. That said, a lot of what we talk about transcends all formats. We're available on all major podcast platforms. Can we get 50 play points back? Let's find out. We're on the play. I want to keep this. I just don't think you're allowed to. Uh... Take a screenshot of this. The sand is uh, certainly interesting. Let's snip that. All right. So. I just don't think you're allowed to. All right. Let's get rid of this discover, I suppose. Island past the turn. Mountain. Goblin guide. This seems like a great opportunity for me to cast Otherworldly Gaze. Ah, yeah. Uh, let's mill the Thought Scour. And then we're going to put Bolt and then Fiery Island on top. And then hit that F6 key. Draw the Fiery Islet. Draw. Oh my god, it's a lightning bolt. That's so crazy. Pass the turn. Alright, so Goblin Guide triggers. Wish. Alright, we don't really want that. Um, I'm going to attempt a bolt here. They could Boros Charm, but I'd actually be a little bit surprised if they did Boros Charm here. Like, you're keeping a Goblin Guide alive for 4 damage. Like, I don't know, it seems a little weak. I'm actually expecting them to play an idol under the Great Revel, and then we have this backup bolt to hit it. Interesting, they're just passing. Alright, we're going to cast Consider and Mill this Wish. Draw. Give me that Ascension, though. I would like to Ascend. All right, we have to pass the turn. Lightning bolt, we're at 14. All right, so we're going to fetch the basic mountain here, going to 13. And then we're going to tap the fiery islet, and that's going to bring us down to 12, and we're going to cast discover here. We have to find an enchantment if we want to win this. One has five cards in hand. Um, we did not hit an enchantment. Guess we just take the Morphos and cast it. Okay, we'll do blue blue. Consider. 
We'll keep the consider and then gas consider, I guess. Trying to sculpt a little bit here rather than just blowing this thought scour because you don't really want to mill an enchantment. Sure, I'm at nine. Uh, that can be milled. Not looking good for the home team here. We do have otherworldly gaze, but I don't know if we can afford to actually cast that. Guess maybe I have to here. All right, they still have four cards. Swiss Spear. Getting in for one. I'm going to attempt a bolt. If they have two one mana instant speed burn spells, you got me. All right, Swiss Spear down. All right, they have three cards in hand. We're about to go to eight life. I guess I could just draw off this islet instead of paying a life. That might be better. Golding turn. Awkward. Okay, upkeep. Let's flash this back. I think I just have to mill these. Like, I could keep Wish because it does eventually get Pyromancer Ascension. But it's just so much time. And I have to burn the rituals to do it too. And then I'm stuck with just a Thought Scour in hand. Draw. Okay. They drew a card off Fiery Islet. I'm afraid of casting Thought Scour because I feel like I'm just going to mill an Ascension. But maybe I just have to convert it? I'm not sure. Suspends Rift Bolt. Alright, well, we're going to go to 8. Boros Charm? Sure. Yep, so we're at four and they have a rough bolt suspended, so we are dead if we pass the turn. Which is a very likely thing to happen. Alright, end step, we're gonna thought scour. Mild an Aria of Flame, but we hit invoke calamity. I just don't think that card is actually uh going to do anything meaningful either. Okay, draw. Oh my, we hit it. So you're saying there's a chance. Do I have, I don't have a single ritual in the graveyard. Um, so I can add one counter. Um, all right, I need to think about this. So three, four, five into invoke. How do I not have any other rituals in the graveyard? I milled so many cards. All right, so ritual, ritual. So this is going to add one counter. So the question is, how do we find a winning line from here? Because I, I do need to create two counters on this. Um. I think I think the ascension will trigger if I do double morphos. There it goes. So I'll draw three cards and get to make six mana. Wait, did it not double? It didn't double. So I get to draw two cards and make four mana. That's not quite as good. All right. Um, we have to get lucky here. Uh, I think that means we just lost. Because I can't hit anything off Otherworldly Gaze. I can mill as many cards as I want, but there's nothing to create card advantage. It stinks. Alright. I was yield. Damn. We, f we came pretty close, but they got us. All right, so they have a Rift Bolt and Exile. So the only way we could even stay alive is if they don't have one point of damage in their three cards. So they have two cards in hand and they have a draw step. So three cards needs to not deal us any damage, pretty unlikely. And there we go to negative two. Okay, so probably want the two answers to idle on. 
get rid of these invokes. Honestly, I don't even like Wish that much here. Like, I just think that this deck probably doesn't even want to be playing Wish, if I'm honest. Like, I think you probably just want to be playing 8 enchantments. Because I think the curve of this deck is honestly too high, and Wish feels really clunky. Like, there's zero games that I really want to burn Wish into Ascension, because, like, we play 17 lands. How often do you have 5 spare mana to go Wish into Ascension? Almost never. So, like, why are we playing this card that's super clunky? Like, I think you can probably keep the Discovers. But Discover would be my top end, in my opinion. Like, I would cut Wish, and I would cut the Invoke Calamity. And I would just play a lower deck. Um, I think you could honestly play the Strike at Riches and the Otherworldly Gaze. I talked about a little bit in the intro about how Evan mentioned uh, wanting to play Strike at Rich in this deck. Because you could turn one Strike at Rich, turn two Pyromancer or Ascension, and then cast a spell to add a, you know, a counter or whatever. Um, which is cool. But... I like that because you're lowering your curve, you're enabling more early plays, or you can go turn one strike into turn two Aria, which is really powerful. Um, but you're making your deck faster, so then that makes sense. And you get to keep other worldly gaze, so you're keeping your synergies. It's all just gravy. Like, all this stuff makes sense to me. But these super clunky cards don't play with either strategy that well, so it's really strange. But another card I'd be interested in is Noxious Revival. Because not with Noxious Rem Revival, you get the guaranteed win with Pyromancer Ascension Manamorphose. So that's really nice. Um, plus, it's a zero mana card for Aria. So it, once again, plays into your pre-existing strategies. Uh, I think I'm going to try this. We do need to draw a red source, though. All right. Island. And I'm just going to be lazy and do this now. Can't stop me. Ottawara, ugh, double red source. Why are you doing this to me? That hurt my feelings. I definitely needed one of those red sources. Suspends Rift Bolt. Okay. Mod Redland. Thank you. All right, ouch. Ascension, pass the turn. So next turn I can play Scour into Rituals, into Wish, into something. Alright, I'm at 16. Goblin Guide. Ouch. Discover the Impossible. Is that a card I want to draw? I don't think so. Uh, the reason why is that next turn I can't do anything with it. So I think I'm going to cast this uh, Thought Scour in my upkeep. Always yes, and then auto yield. So we're going to mill that discover plus an aria. Okay, draw. I drew another discover. So I can play this into wish, which would then trigger this. So I'd have one floating mana. So I could play like uh, an E for one, I suppose. Okay. So now our Pyromancer is unleashed. I guess I could Reckless. I don't know if that's some, something I actually want to do, but it's an option. Uh Oh yeah, I have Double Wish. Whoops. Hmm. Alright, so I'm going to play the March here and pitch the Lightning Bolt. And then we can just play an E for zero. Unfortunately, though, I cannot cast any more spells this turn. And then E for zero. Cast the turn. Yeah, like, I think you just saw it there where I had four mana for Wish, but Wish was extremely uncomfortable because it's so costly. Like, I just don't think this is supposed to be a Wish deck. And if you're not the wish deck, you could also create a board plan that doesn't lose to Force of Vigor, like a multiple empty plan or something else. Uh, and it just really opens up a lot of potential for this deck, I think. Ouch, ready. Draw. Okay, so let's play the Desperate Ritual. 
Yes. So much mana. And then let's discover the impossible. Yes. See if we can hit a mana morphos. And we did. Okay. Yes, I would like to cast that for free and copy it. Make some blue mana. Blue mana. All right. Now we're cooking with fire. Okay. And then let's discover again. Yes. Okay. I think we just take the bolt here. Target it at them, so that's six damage. All right, discover. Uh, let's take another discover here. And then this one finally resolves, and there's a lightning bolt. So we can cast that at them, and then this one's the game. And lightning bolt. Aya. Woot, there it is. That's game number two against Burn. One more game left in this league. We're just going to hit cement. Keep, 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 keep. Looks like the opponent also kept their seven. Sacred Foundry. Monastery Swiss Spear. Okay. We're going to fall to 19 life. Draw. Not Lightning Bolt. What a bummer. So by drawing Desperate Ritual, it does open up the potential to play Aria Flame on turn two. Just throwing that out there. All right, so our opponent is going to combat. Hacking? I mean, I think you probably want to attack. There they go. All right, so we're going to take it here. I think they might have the idol on. White mana. Double white mana. Or a sanctifier. I don't care about that. You got it. Draw. All right, so let's play this ritual into Aria. This puts them up to 27. All right, three open mana. What is the damage? They have four cards in hand. Boros Charm. Ouch. So this will be a total of eight damage and I'll be at 10. I'm just going to take a draw here. Uh, max punished. Max punished. Okay. The, the reason I wanted to take a draw was I wanted to keep my options open, like potentially uh, echoing truthing a creature to stay alive. Like I could have played the upkeep other otherworldly gaze, but I was like, well, what if I drew one mana cantrip? Like, does that change anything? And... I ended up drawing an Aria, which was just terrible. In my mind, I was like, what's the worst possible draw? I'll land, and then I drew something worse. <laughs> so obviously that didn't work out. All right, so they're attacking. This represents three. So even if they don't have anything else, I would go to seven, which means I'm dead to Boros Charm Burn Spell. Looks like they're about to cast something. Skullcrack. So I would go to seven. So if I take this, I go to four, and then I'm dead to any three mana burn spell. So I think I'm supposed to echoing truth the Swift Sphere. Um, it's really gonna hurt if they have Idol on. So with this, I go to five. Okay, so I go to one. Um, but then I get to attempt to win the game on my turn. Otherworldly Gaze, you'll take two, so you go to 20. We really want to find, like, Mana Morphos and Rituals here. All right, we can get rid of these. I'm going to keep the Ritual, though. 
that can go on top. All right, so it's now or never. I need to get pretty lucky in order to win this, I think. Dross, we're drawing the Ritual. The Ritual represents three damage. We really want to find, and I mean really want to find Manamorphose off this Discover. Discover, this will deal four. Come on, Manamorphose, please. We found Morphos. We also found a lot of cantrips. Uh, so this Morphos will deal five. Cast it. We need to draw something we can cast off it. And our opponent just conceded. That was it's not lethal. Oh, uh, we have other worldly gaze in the graveyard. It is lethal. They didn't concede. They lost connection. Um... But this is lethal, so we're going to add blue-blue. And then we have other really gaze and consider, and that's going to win it. All right, blue-blue. Consider. Yes. And then flashback other really gaze. Boom! All right, so we went 2-3. Not bad. Uh... I mean, it's fine. So let's talk about where I started and where we ended up. So I was really low on Discover going into this. I think this card was above my expectations. Uh, and I know that I covered this in the last match, but a lot of people skip to the end and they don't actually watch me play Magic, which is very rude of them, but let's go over it once again. So I think that this card was pretty good. Uh, cards that I think underperformed Wish. Invoke Calamity. I don't think that these were particularly good cards. So I would look to cut those. And instead of playing these five cards, I would put two more of the enchantments back into your deck. I am interested in Strike It Rich. Uh, where and over what, I'm not sure. I'd also like Noxious Revival because Revival gives you the infinite combo with Pyromancer Ascension and Manamorphose. It's also a free spell for Aria Flame. But on top of that, if you mill a Pyromancer Ascension with Thought Scour or Otherworldly Gaze on accident or whatever, maybe your Ascension gets destroyed, you can put it back on top with Noxious Revival, and that's really good. So I would be looking to play Striker Rich and Noxious Revival, and I think if you play those two cards, you can also cut down on lands a little bit. You could maybe go down to 16 lands um, just because you'd have, you know, a card that could have put a fetch land back on top or strike it rich gets you to two or three mana and they don't really need any more it's also possible that you could play strike it rich over one of the rituals because the rituals aren't as important or maybe you don't even play rituals anymore maybe you're not a ritual based deck maybe you're just a deck full of a bunch of this stuff i'm not sure you'd have to play it and figure it out but i think i would move away from wish uh that's my message here I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you disagree with me or agree with me. I don't really care either way, but I do love that you watched this much. Thank you, and I hope you have a great day. Evan, thanks for your support. I do appreciate it, and uh, see you, everyone. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.